So there's three elements to a color. There's the hue, which is what color it is, red or green or blue. And then there's the value, which is how light or dark it is. And then there's the saturation, which is how pure of a color, how sort of vivid the color is. So this t-shirt is a very saturated red. I think we have a lot of preconceptions about color, about each of those three elements of color. And those get in the way when we're trying to learn how to use color. And so to kind of give a really good example about all, some of the major preconceptions we have about color, I wanted to go back to the comic book that I made when I was a kid. Okay, so maybe the first preconception that we can see on this page is about the hue, what color things are. So here I'm thinking bricks, bricks are brown. So I'm just gonna use a kind of brown color and do the whole brick wall in that color. So that's an example of a preconception. Uh, I think this one shows pretty well, a pre kind of a preconception about saturation levels. I didn't know about saturation and I just thought orange is orange, yellow is yellow, but use them as they come out of the tube, like pure pigment. So everything is at maximum saturation levels. But the third preconception, which is the one that I really want to focus on today, is the shadows. My idea was that the shadows are just darker versions. Uh, you know, when something is in shade, it's just a darker version of the same color. And I would take that to the max by just adding loads of black in the shadows. So that's the preconception that I want to put to the test today in this video. What's going on with the colors in the shadows? If something is red, is it the case that what's in the shadows is just a darker version of the red? You just bring the value down. If you were painting it, you would just mix in black to the same color for the shadow parts. Is that right? Let's go outside and put it to the test. Hi, my name is Kenzo. This is Love Life Drawing. Okay, so if those preconceptions about how color works were true, then what would be happening on this street would be something like this. The, the, the road and the pavement and stuff's kind of gray, concrete's kind of gray. Where the light is hitting, it would just be lighter, a lighter gray. Where there's a shadow, it would just be darker, a darker gray. But let's take a still of this scene right here, put it in the iPad and see what it's really like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the color on the lit part of the street and on the shadow part of the street and I'm gonna increase the value so it's nice and light and we can see it more clearly and the saturation. So as if it was just a pure color, not with any kind of gray in it or anything like that. That way we can see the colors more clearly. And what you can see is that on the lit part of the street, it's a very warm orange color. And on the shadow part of the street, it's a very cool blue color. It's kind of mind blowing when you see it like that. So what's going on is the direct sunlight is kind of a warm light and it's warming up the colors where it's hitting directly. But where there's shadow, that light isn't affecting the colors so much. But what is affecting the colors is that. The blue light coming down from the sky can still reach all these sh uh, shaded areas and that is cooling them down overall. Okay, so what I've done here is attempt to recreate a painting, an attempt that I made a few years ago. And we didn't have a daughter then who could bang her head on the table, so there wasn't this foam there. And we had, I mean, right now, all I have is a rotten tangerine and some very tired bananas, but hopefully you'll get the point. I was really disappointed with this attempt. And the reason at that time, I didn't understand why. I didn't know why it wasn't working, but something wasn't working. And I remember at the time, I thought I had figured out shadow colors. I thought they were cooler. They were bluer, like we saw on that street. And so you can see on the banana shadow, I tried to uh, make the shadows blue and it just didn't make sense, but I didn't realize that that was the problem. So I'm gonna show that shadows can be warm with some tomatoes right now. What we have here is a pretty simple setup. 
we have some tomatoes on white paper and then a lamp on the left hand side and the lamp is hitting the tomatoes directly with light and the tomatoes are casting shadows onto the white paper. And if we look at the shadows here, which are kind of encircled by tomatoes, surrounded by tomatoes, you can, you can actually see, even if I don't enhance the color, you can see the red in that tomato. But just to make it more clear, let's enhance that color and really see how red it is. What's happening is the light is bouncing off these tomatoes back into the shadow here, making it nice and red. And actually, there's an art teacher called Jared Cullum who we're going to meet later on. And the way that he would describe this is it's like a pinball machine. It not, it's not just bouncing once off these tomatoes and into the shadows, but all around between these tomatoes, it's just bouncing and bouncing. Every time it bounces, it does get weaker, but it's just enhancing and increasing the amount of red in those shadows because it's just so much red bouncing around in there. On the other side, there is still perhaps a little bit of red light coming off the tomatoes into these cast shadows, but it's nowhere near as strong. It's nowhere near the amount of red that's happening in these tomatoes here. This shadow is getting hit with light, maybe a little bit off the tomatoes, but also from the rest of the room, from the walls, from the ceiling, from the other stuff on the table. So it's a little bit more of a mixed bag in terms of the color. So the point is not that shadows are always cooler and blue in color, although they often, you know, often they are, but they can be warm, they can be red in color too. The color of the shadows depends on where the light is bouncing around, getting into the shadows. And so here, there is a blue sofa, which would make a sort of cool bluish light bouncing in here, but the walls are yellow, the table is a warm color, the fruits themselves coming off the tangerine, coming off the banana back to the tangerine, just bouncing around in here, those are all warm colors. So I think I could have had more variety in the, in the colors of the shadows. Certainly not just darkening it, not just mixing in black and just making a darker yellow and a darker orange. It's good to have some variety and to be open-minded about what colors could be in there, but it's not always going to be cool. You can think about where's the light going to be coming from to create a really beautiful range of colors. And I think these, sh these shadows would be warm. And this, this, I mean, this is just, this has got to go straight in the bin, really, doesn't it? So I mentioned an artist before called Jared Cullum. He's super passionate about color. He's a super nice guy too. So he's going to just tell us quickly a little bit more about what we can see in the shadows in that street scene. The thing is, as you move closer towards other objects, you start getting into where light is, is bouncing all around like crazy. Yeah. So what happens is, is you'll get warmer areas closer to objects because light is bouncing off of other objects. Could be bouncing off this building over here, the car, this tree, this area. So you'll get these little moments of color all over that are slightly different, even within the shadows. So if you were to pitch most of this blue, that would be pretty close to the correct because a lot of this area is getting influenced by this blue fill light. But areas that are getting closer to other objects are starting to pick up a little bit of that bounce light. So I mentioned earlier, you know, this painting that I was frustrated by and I couldn't figure out what, what I was doing wrong. But by starting to understand this stuff about the colors and the shadows, I started to do quick paintings and sketches with gouache paint or digitally that I was more and more happy with. And that's so such an exciting feeling and so, it feels so good, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. And when you start to look at master artists and you have this stuff in mind, their paintings become even more amazing. So one of the best out there is an artist called Soroya. And so here is Jared again quickly to tell us a little bit about what makes Soroya's paintings so magical. Soroya was one of the best 
maybe in history at really noticing those color notes and expressing that those transitions of color so you can see of course the big fabric the big material that they're all working on look at all the interplay of warm and cool as it's it's slowly transitioning and i always i, I try to think of things so when I'm painting like I'm sculpting which is to say like if I find an area I place a, I place an area I try to imagine if I'm like again like an ant walking to the next area on that the next plane you know am I moving into more cool or more warm is the value changing you know how that's being affected but look at the cast shadows of other objects on it they're very cool when they're facing upward and then if they're facing downward do you see this strong warmth kind of yellow ochre warmth of the areas that are downward facing you're getting this beautiful interplay back and forth between a kind of yellow and blue do you see what i mean yes it's so it just it just livens everything up as well yeah it really i mean it really brings you to the moment and then when you look over to the our right side of it you see the guy's uh, sun hat or lady I can't really tell but you can see that person's sun hat mm. and how it's sort of more green influence because you have light that's getting scattered through the greens and he's up next to those uh, trees so he's getting little subtle greens in his hat in the shadows this stuff is so fun and exciting to me it's so mind-blowing to start to see these colors both in real life and in these master paintings and you might start to think stuff like, well, I can't see these colors in the shadows. And that's how I felt. To me, it was just like, the shadows just look kind of dark, and kind of gray. I don't really see this information in them. Maybe I don't have the special artist's eyes to be able to pick up on this stuff. So here, one last time, is art teacher Jared Cullum to help us out with that, with a little pet talk. Every time you look at any object, any time where light is involved, color and light is bouncing all around all the time. So people see it all the time. So you can start to become attuned to it. And then just my own personal journey, I started out and I had a friend who was a painter and I asked him for advice on how to start. And he was like, well, you look for these colors. He explained that stuff to me and I didn't see it at all. So it's not like you have to have some special talent or be touched or have some kind of gift for seeing this stuff it's not you just don't have the words for it yet the vernacular for color so for me i didn't see it at all and i thought oh well, i guess i'm just not a painter like maybe i should just quit because yeah he's obviously talented he's obviously special he sees this stuff and i don't see this i don't see the code the matrix code or whatever uh but it's something that when i started sketching and practicing and thinking about it it's it's like flipping those switches they start to it starts to turn on for you it's the same, just the same. Everything you described is the same for me. I mean, I'm in the middle of it right now, which is started out shadows, just darken it, make it blacker. Yeah, right. And then <laughs> shadows bluer, just everything bluer for shadows. And then I was talking to you and you were like, you see in this shadow, it's a little bit warmer. And I'm like, oh man, I can't see that. I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I've not got the gift. Right. I'm just, I should just stick to drawing. And then, um, now even just walking around trying to find these things for this video it's helping mm -hmm. to train up my eyes guys i'm right in the middle of this color journey i'm having so much fun it's so exciting um, and i'm sure there's going to be more frustration and more struggles over the next few months and i'm going to document everything and everything that i'm learning on this channel so i hope you'll join me i think it's going to be really fun um, and so next time we're going to be looking a bit more at color wheels, a bit more at saturation and how the light interacts with the color of the objects it's landing on, which is really fascinating and quite tricky. But we're going to make a really, really cool video about it. So check it out. For now, there should be a video somewhere on the screen. Check that out because it's probably cool because it's from our channel and I'll see you guys next time.